Good evening, everybody, for Monday night's edition of Paranormal Question of the Day. And we'll be right back right after the intro. And we're back. So, everybody, I hope you're having a, a wonderful Monday. And we have Mr. Daniel Class here with us today. And Darren, Finally. as always. So, how are you doing, Dan? Well, I'm doing good now that I'm here and we're live. It feels good. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that's a good thing to start off with. I <laughs> got your keys. I got my keys and I'm just standing right next to me, damn, dang it. <laughs> so, uh, before we get going with tonight's program, uh, Dan, you have something you want to announce for your Patreon group and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, so. You, you as you when you own a, own a location and you're trying to do things the right way one of the biggest things hey Dom. one of the biggest things for me is always how uh, information is presented to people and how trying to stay consistent with how things are said you know um the stories I, you, you want to be consistent and uh even with John. even if i have tour guides and helpers sometimes the story goes off in a little way here or there so um working with uh vicky Lawson, she um, came up with an idea of doing these QR codes. Um, so basically what hey, we're going to do is we are going to be putting QR codes or having them made uh, throughout the house. There's going to be 12 stations. Uh, and then on the outside of the house, there's going to be an additional 19 stations. And then we're going to have like a map for people. So like when they get there, um, they can <clears throat> they can scan the Q QR code and cool things will start popping up like videos from the priest that did the exorcism um uh information of what happened where it happened how it happened dates specifics things that are i think as a paranormal investigator you would love to have at your fingertips uh while you're doing an investigation knowledge is power you know and i always say that when you go to these locations we want to be able to present um everybody that's coming in with as much information as possible um, so that can help further uh, the research that they're going to be doing at the locations they're going to be at. So uh, these are these are um, these are things that we can adjust if something changes. If somebody gets a piece of information that maybe plugs a puzzle piece in, and we get more information and um, add things to them as we go. Uh, we've added uh, teams EVPs, pictures stuff that we've collected throughout the years onto these these QR codes for everybody to view when they come to the house. Um, and we're just trying to raise the funds to get everything made and finish. I just had I just had a, a got when I got home today, I had an uh, envelope from Richard Allman. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. Mm -mm. And he's, he's always big supporter of paranormal. And I opened up the envelope and he sent $100, you know, like, which was it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I've had awesome. a, I, I put a video up uh, the other day for the patrons and I've had five paid five new patrons sign up, which is amazing. Um, and, uh, we're getting there. We're, we, we need to get to about a little over $700 and we're, we're about halfway, almost halfway there. So well, I awesome. shared this out to about 54 groups. And so. I have the link down below here so people can, uh, get onto the Patreon play, uh, page. If you, if you cho choose to go the Patreon route to make a donation, um, even if you do a dollar, one dollar, uh, I would I would just ask that if you could do the yearly subscription, which would be twelve dollars, just pay the twelve dollars up front, and then you get to be a cool, you get to be a part of the group for the whole year, and you don't get bugged for a year. <laughs> but that I the, think we're gonna do the, that though, since we're the, coming out there. The money comes, uh, the money comes to me the next month, so we can actually take the twelve dollars and just put that right towards what we're doing. So we can have the codes and everything set up right away. Right now I have some, I, I just made some copies and threw them up just to test it. And it's working really good. The first team that used them was like, wow, this was amazing to have this information. I thought this was this. And I thought, so it clears things up. And I think it, it benefits to uh, have, have something like that at, mm -hmm. at the location. So it'll be so really cool. What are you guys doing to, and this is just, so this is information for anybody watching that does the same thing that does almost the same thing, or you may start a trend, which would be awesome because I think it's actually a really good idea. Um, uh, but how are you obtaining the information? Like, are you going to, do you have a researcher? Are you going to like libraries to make oh, sure? I mean, I've been, the yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, I've been I've been researching the information since I own the house. So I mean, mm -hmm. it's uh, I've had information presented to me, and we've actually been able to um, debunk some of that information. We've been able to um, go down the right path with some information. We've been able to find things that we didn't have before. Um, so it's just been a whirlwind of, of research, and and I employed researchers from other teams. I have employed my own researchers, my own my own means, and and anybody that's ever come to the house that's had something to put in there. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've never like shied away from uh, taking help from people, and we've been just compiling this for years. And not, and I was thinking about how what is the best way to present this to people? What's the best way to get this? The easiest way to get this into people's hands when they come to the house to investigate. And having having a little barcode that you can scan on the wall in the living room, puts you put will will physically put it put you in the middle of where the, the, the spot that the exorcism took place in 1974 in April, mm -hmm. um, and have the priest there and have videos and have uh, specifics like what flew off the shelf, what did they say, who was there, you know, maybe having some of that information while you're doing investigation can help. Absolutely, so interesting that you're you're talking about this because. Um, I had, uh, I did a special show last night with someone, uh, Mark Skigel, and he's a huge historian, researcher, all kinds of stuff. And they actually investigate either cemeteries or wherever they go, they, but they will hone in on one person in the cemetery and kind of mm -hmm. do all this research and then go there specifically to try to communicate with them. Or when they do the house, they will, before they go into a house, they do all kinds of, of, of research to specifically try to communicate with, you know, what knowledge, what evidence, or I mean, whatever they have, you know, which all my life I've been investigating since 2007, but we were always told we, we shouldn't know because, you know, what is going on or what happened, you know, so because people, but I feel like that's more for the medium side of things, not, but it, then again, because they, you know, they always say like, you know, if you, you're already planting a seed. So when you're going in there, right. you know, your mind can make you maybe feel or see or think or, you know, think certain things. But I think that would be more for a medium to not want to know anything for their own personal validation. As no, it, and it's, it's been, it's, it's weird because mediums have visions all the time and people that are coming to the house seem to have visions or, or dream or dreams about the location before they even come there. Like I saw April posted in the, in the timeline mm -hmm. about um, some of the stuff that she had saw, which is, which, you know, she's dead on, you know, like she's never yeah. been to the house. Yeah. I was um, getting to that. I have it starred because you were talking yeah. so was, you know, and we can't see your face. So I'm going to put it back up. When that's, you not, that's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, cover up my face. That's fine. <laughs> April's much prettier than I am, so that's fine. She is. She's a hottie. <laughs> I stalked her for a really long time before we became best friends. So, um, but interesting, you know, like interesting enough, like when the Dandy family lived there in 1970 through 74, Clara actually writes in her book about um, the dogs coming home with bones, and they thought they were like femur bones and like different. They they were probably. Oh, I feel like I heard bones. this story. And um, also the native, we found like Native American relics um, in the, on the property when we were digging the um, septic system. We had like arrowheads and stuff that I actually have on display inside the house that a lot of people actually use, you know, mm -hmm. like take those out and use those as trigger objects or, or whatever, you know, like, and it's been so respectful. Like every, everybody that I've had there, you know, I leave the, I leave the cages open. I, I do, I'm on the honor system at the Hinsdale house. And uh, we've never had any problems with people utilizing some of the uh, things that we have there that are original to the house uh, as trigger objects. We have the chalice from a priest, um, traveling mass kit, and, um, you know, some cool stuff that is, when I open the museum, is going to be pretty cool to have. But, I, I you know, there's got to be trust. You know, there's, there's uh, right. most of the people that come in there are very, tr I'm, I very, I trust everybody, so. And you have that giving yeah. trade outside, too. Yeah, so that that was that was started by Amy Perry Lane, and the thing is, is like I've brought I've brought a lot of different lay people to the um, to the house, and I felt felt feel like there's so many different layers there mm -hmm. um, that it needs more than a Catholic priest. It needs witches. It needs shamans. It needs you know Chris Sutton used to come there every year and do a, a drum circle and a right. blessing, you know, and and so now his student Casey um, is there and she comes and she helps out and does things in his honor. 
she's making she's going to be making a garden for him there That's which is really cool. nice very cool it was um yeah but it, you, you just got to bring all the different layer try to bring as many different layers of love and peace and harmony that you can to, to allow the spiritual world to know that we're trying to connect with them in peace not not negatively and i feel like it's lightened the lo location a lot as far as and but opened up the spirit communication you mm -hmm. know with a lot more uh so it's we get a better understanding of what what is there and what what's trying to accomplish or what it needs um so so I one, of my, one of my best friends stayed there overnight by herself. One of your best and, friends stayed by themselves? Uh, yeah. Megan Talbert. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah. 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 Yeah, so, yeah. So she calls me at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Now, mind you, I'm about six and a half, seven hours from Hinsdale. She's like, the people that were supposed to come tonight aren't coming. I'm here by myself. Can you come here? I'm like, first of all, I'm at work. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? No, you can't stay there by yourself. Like, you know, because I'm here, like, all these, like, I, I, and I'm exaggerating a little bit. Everybody mm -hmm. knows me and knows how I am. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'll say, like, you know, I, I, I exaggerate, but it, everybody knows it's really not that serious. You know what I mean? So, right, right. All these stories I'm hearing are like, you know, bah! and I'm like, you're staying there by yourself. I'm like, no way. I was like, be on the phone with me the entire time. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'll drive there right now. It's like, so, yeah. So, um, she stayed there by herself and she has some interesting stories from there because she's been there quite a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's, 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 um, she's been there like, I think four, maybe four, five. Yeah. Times. Um, and, and I, I was at Wildwood Sanitarium with a group from Tennessee and my group at the time. And then, um, is that SRS? SRS was from, yeah, they were paranormal. Okay. They were from Tennessee and, we are at Wildwood Sanitarium because don't you run Wildwood Sanitarium as well, or you don't anymore? I assist with the with bookings there. You know, oh, I don't okay. own it. Uh, my friends own. No, it, I know but, you don't own um, it. I thought maybe you were like managing it or something like that. No, or... I mean the uh, Brooke and Brooke and Lori and uh, Dale all manage it and do the openings and stuff like that. I just my, when they first opened the location, they're thirty five minutes down the road, and they're really good friends of mine. We've always gotten along, and I just kind of offered them like, listen. Hey, well, I'm at these events and when i'm talking to people i'm like now we can offer two locations and within 30 minutes of each other for yeah people Cynthia. from out of town i go this right. is great you know so i just kind of use it as a marketing thing you know like when i'm out you know so it's, yeah. it's much easier when i'm in iowa to to be able to say hey come on out for the whole weekend i'll give you two locations to investigate instead of drive all the way out do hands down drive all the way back you know like get give them something else to do and then i throw in niagara falls and some other fun things to do on the side you know and yeah things more appealing to people to come out so and we've been getting people from all over the, the country and the world so yeah that's awesome i've been so close to getting to iowa to see him and it's just like every time it doesn't work out <laughs> yeah but, i haven't been to iowa in a little while because every time kelly's done an event lately i've had something else going on but i will yeah. get out there yeah i will definitely get out there and then uh cynthia Gerodius and raven rose is going to be out there uh later this fall correct yep september yep. So yeah, I can't oh, wait. wait to have I, think I, was, I, I think I was. I think I was gonna. I think I'm going to. I'm not sure the the Potter for Pooches thing in July. Oh, good. Yeah, you'll I'll, you'll see me then. Yeah, I love Tim. I, yeah, I I actually wrote to Tito's, and they responded that they would support his cause. So awesome. I've been like annoying him every day. Like, did you? I because I forwarded him the email. I'm like, they want information I don't have. So, and I'm like, did you did you respond? Did you respond? Did you respond? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Good. Keep, gonna... keep him on his toes. We don't need him getting depressed. So. Hey, oh, do yeah, have, I know. Do you have right a now. PayPal by any chance? Yeah. Can uh, you send me that link after the show? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Um. So, yeah, I'm going to brave it out, and, I'll, and I'm and I'm coming out. I, I finally have succumbed to it's got to happen. Um. You'll be fine, Taryn. I know. <laughs> I'll be with I'll be with eight of my, you know, seven of my best friends, so I'll, we'll be fine. We'll yeah. have fun. Hey, you know what? There's we can do a stream out there if Dan there, loves it. What did you say? We can do a stream. Quite... Sorry. Dan. <laughs> oh, the stream? We're both saying something at the same time. So, so Dan, Go ahead. what did you say, Dan? <laughs> no, I just said it's going to be quite the, quite the group of people out there. I mean, there's a coming from all over the place, so it's going to be pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And, I, and I'm so happy that you're, you're, you are hosting the Potographs thing there, only because... I want them to try to get out more out this way, you know what I mean? And get some exposure, you know, on the East coast. And, you know, I, I've been trying to. This really... is our second one. Is the first it? One was, yeah. Our, our first one was super successful. 
When I, was I that? Think it was almost two th- uh, right before pandemic happened. Oh. And I think you raised about two grand for the. That's awesome. Yeah, it was like close to two grand for the organization. So Tim's my neighbor. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know this. So he's on. He's he's doing he's doing his show on my on Paranormal Brew and everything. And and Tim is like, I talk to Tim like almost on a daily basis. And then on my show, he's like, Oh yeah, we went out to dinner together, me and Darren. I was like, What? I was like, <laughs> Neither of you told me you guys were like bros. At least you're not wearing <laughs> like, a chicken suit or something while the show's going on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, he's 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 a very cool, interesting guy. Big heart, and I I love oh, how he uh, how he uh, you can't, just goes uh, about his stuff. You can't you can't not if you sit and ever listen to him talk and and hear one of his, his speeches or lectures. You can't you're not human if you don't leave with a tear in your eye. I mean, it's just unbelievable, True story. Mm-hmm. unbelievable. True story. I've had him on three or four times, and and I always tell myself prior to my interviews, I'm like. I, every, whenever I have him on, I'm like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Sure enough, I cry. Every time. Mm-hmm. But it's a good cry because it's just, it, the story is amazing. Um, His story. So you have to check him out. Absolutely. So, Dan, I got a question for you. Yeah. So what got you started into looking at the Hensley house and what gra- gravitates you over to buy the location? How, uh, how it all got started? Um. I mean, it started with my team, the Greater West New York Paranormal Society. Um, it was just a typical, you know, we're setting up an investigation type of thing like other teams do, except I didn't have any input into this one because my co-founder booked it all. And normally I do everything. Like I was the responsible one on the team. Like I did the, got research, told the team what we were doing, where we're going and um, got all the information for everyone. And this one, I was like, oh. Finally, I can just sit, just sit, sit back and drive the event. No stress. Like, this is great, you know, until mm-hmm. I got there. So it was like the middle of December and I'm driving up, up and it's in the middle of nowhere up this mountain. And it's so, so secluded. And as you're driving up the mountain, you look at your phone, you look at your phone and the service is gone. So you have no phone service. It's like I'm driving into a horror story here. You know, like this is, this is what it felt like. Like um, I had no idea about the history yet the first mm-hmm. time I ever went there. And uh, when I finally did get to the house, um, the only lights that they had electric working was in the living room and it was freezing. There were flies buzzing around. It was below zero and there's flies buzzing flies. around. That's weird. Yeah. Um, I I'd sat have been down like, yeah, yeah, no, not for me guys. You guys have fun. I'm out. <laughs> Easier Catch you on done. the next house. <laughs> it, was, it was snowing out in the Southern tier of New York state, you know? So it's like, right. And I had a two front wheel drive car. <laughs> so I was a fine. Slide all over the place. I've driven there and I've driven in the parking lot. And we just like drove when we were at Wildwood. We went there just to kind of like see it. I think there was a group out there at the time. So we didn't like get out and walk around or anything, which I don't even know if you're allowed to do. If you're, you're not, I, we didn't do it, but mm. I didn't know that. Only so with anyways, permission. You what? Only usually with permission, especially right. if there's a, a group there that's running there. it, you know? Yeah, so we didn't know. We pulled in, we looked at, and we just kind of circled and then just went back out. But it 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 looks bigger than what it is. I hear, mm-hmm. right? Is it, is it kind of small inside? It is small, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, did you were you buying the property to do what you're doing with it now, or yes. okay? Yeah, I mean, I uh, I sat down in in the living room and he put plopped on a uh, a haunting. A dark forest, which was based on the story of the house, mm-hmm. failed exorcism, bees, you know, like cra- all this crazy stuff. And I just remember looking at him and saying, are we, are we in, are we in that house? You know, like the house that they're talking <laughs> about, like, you know, because it's kind of something that you want to mentally prepare for when you know that there's a failed structural exorcism in a location. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, but it was, um, it was, it was, once I grounded myself, it was a really productive night as far as like, just spot responses that I couldn't explain noises. You couldn't explain, like, I don't know. I just felt drawn to the location and um, I continued to go there. Um, and it got to a point of such disarray, you know, the team that was trying to help with the house at the time from Buffalo, um, that the guy that owned it was from Calgary. You know, he was a paranormal investigator from Calgary and it's kind of hard to manage things from so far away. 
Right. And uh, he defaulted on the mortgage and went back to the bank. And the bank, because it was such in bad shape, tore the ductwork, electrical, and they were just getting it to tear it down because nobody would buy it, rent it anymore. That you know, they got their their money's worth out of that house because they've had it since 1970. People mm-hmm. moved in and out of it so so many times. You know, it was. How, like, how old chance, is the house? Did you ever get a chance to talk to any of the previous people that lived there or owned it? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 taken time. Uh, it wasn't all done right at, at the at the beginning, but that was kind of like my thought process was as if it happened to this one family it had to have happened to others that lived thereafter um and then i started researching uh, a family that the misnick family because they were they were the easiest ones that popped up they were an older couple that lived there up until 1986 and um there was videos of them talking about ghosts on youtube and stuff that was happening at the house but they had a, it wasn't it wasn't bad they said they had a mutual uh kind of respect for what was there and they, and they felt like they were respected but that's it was still know. still kind of interesting to me, and they both died within two months of each other. Oh, jeez. And um, yeah, but old age that can do that, like broken heart yeah. syndrome and stuff. Yeah, and I'll, I think old old age can also you, you you might have a different level of perception of what thing what's actually happening. You might not notice things as much because your that perception kind of fades away a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I was basically the house was. The door, the, the the locks were off of it. The black mold all throughout the kitchen. Everything was ripped out of it. It was a few weeks from being torn down, and I was there. We were allowed to go there. We had permission to go there one more time, and um, we're saying goodbye to the place. Really, you know, we're hey, cat. And see you later. Um, and I had a K two meter in my hand. I was in the kitchen with my Damn. co-founder of the group and uh, a camera person. You know, like filming what we were doing. And they were talking about the exorcism and nothing was happening. And then finally I mentioned Flo Misnick and I got like a static electrical something going on in my arm where I was getting goosebumps and the K2 meter went all the way up to 500 milligauss. And uh, I continued to have what I felt was a conversation with her. I felt like I connected with her. Mm -hmm. Um, It felt good. You know, it felt nice. And then I said, can you hold my hand as we go up the stairs? And the, the K2 meter stayed lit in my hand all the way up the stairs into the master bedroom. And I, 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 that was at that point, I'm I'm like, I need to try to save this place. You know, this is the voices here need to have a way to, to, you know, access us and respond. And then this, this, we can't let, just let this place get torn down. And, uh, I called the bank, nobody was answering, you know, and then finally they called me back and they were offering me the, the, the property without the, without the house. They're like, well, it's getting torn down. I'm like, no, no, I want it with the house. Well, you're not going to be able to get a mortgage. I go, I understand. I go, but there's got to be a way, you know, like, so they did like a land contract for me, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, after I went down and they saw how passionate I was about saving it and um, they they basically held the mortgage and did a land contract uh, sale for me. And I had to come up with 10 grand within a couple of weeks. And I had just closed on my other, my new house that I bought for my family. I mean, everything just kind of fell into place. That's right? awesome. Like it was meant to be. Right. Yeah, like it was meant to be. Like the fact that that they actually would do something nice for a person, you know what I mean, and say, "Yeah, we'll hold this," or you know, hold that, you know what I mean, and, and try to help you out to be able to keep the place, you know. Yeah, it says a lot because most of them don't give a shit. Right? No, no, it's all about cash. Yep, mm-hmm. absolutely. absolutely. And and the coolest thing was is that um, the guy, the 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 people that owned it, Reese Tree Farms. Um, they they did the land lease thing for me and then he's like oh by the way this um i think this tv company or well, i don't know who they are but they're they're trying to film at the location <laughs> i'm like oh okay you know like and i put it to the side and then a few months after i had started own after i owned it um i they reached out to me and uh, it was it ended up being uh, nick and katrina <laughs> oh cool <laughs> like, um it was uh it was their nick's cousin justin who was one of my one of my good friends now but it was uh it was so like things just you know because they wouldn't they, this was on their bucket list of places to do and nick said it was on his place for a uh, bucket list for over 10 years and he's always felt drawn to the location and it was almost gone you know like just none of the not not you know ever, most people would if you asked i think would know what the hinsdale house is i would hope we've done enough work where a lot of people yeah. at least know you know so I oh mean, yeah no no, no. Right. i hear nothing it but good be, about that stuff it like, could be gone you know mm-hmm. and that's the thing like there there are some places that i've been to a, a numerous times and you know you think 
you spend all this money to investigate, you're putting all this stuff into it. And, it, and, you know, you know, you feel like it's going for a good cause, a good reason, you know, and, but as you go to these places time and time again, and you're not really seeing anything being put back into it when, you know, part of the reason that you're doing it is to contribute to the restoration to these historical sites, you know what I mean? And, you know, have an opportunity to try to save, not just the location, but, you know, help the spirits out that are there, you know? And so there are a lot of places that, but I have heard that you are doing a wonderful job with the restorations, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, you did, you did YouTube videos too, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, I, I do, I, I try to involve people. So like people that are interested, like, especially with like the Patreon group, um, I involve them with everything that we do. Oh, Hey Mike, what's going on? Buddy? I love Mike. You miss, miss him. Yeah. He's awesome. He's been there quite a few times. Hey, Penny, thank you. Hey, Penny. Yeah, um, I, yeah I mean, it's 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 really, it's 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 unbelievable. Like, I, I feel like you bring people, you can bring people into the, the story and, and help them. Uh, Welcome, Mike. Know what their money is going towards. Like, if you make a donation, it's not, hey, I'm going to go on vacation and, and go, right. whatever, you know. I think mm -hmm. if you draw people in and make them part of it, it becomes everybody's, you know, and that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be for everyone. And uh, I like to, I like to be able to show, even if it's something as simple as fixing a window. I mean, it's not I, a, the video I watched. I think you were doing something with the toilet. There was something wrong. Oh, with the oh toilet. yeah. So, it was a while ago, but it was something with the toilet. Yeah. On a toilet. Well, the, the toilet had to be removed. We had to put a new one in. And yeah. we had to actually, we had to redo the whole bathroom, the framework, everything. Yeah, but we found some cool stuff on the walls, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's so awesome. But I want to—I like to let people know, like you know, this is the ones that have been there, the ones that haven't been there. Getting internet set up there was a pain in the ass because it was all satellite. There was no uh, fiber run up the mountain, and finally they did two years ago. And it's like, oh my gosh, finally we can have fast internet service and, yeah, and run the cameras and all and stuff. that. But yeah, it was huge net. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, uh, think, we can I only... think what you're trying to do is like awesome. Well, you got to bring it to everybody you, uh, by, by having it streamed online. You know, people can, you know, I've, I, I would have people. I remember the first night that I had one camera with HughesNet running it on Paranormal Warehouse uh, Facebook page. We had mm -hmm. a couple thousand people viewing it. And uh, it just, you know, so many questions. So many people, what is this? It was kind of, it was new. It was the first time we were ever streaming, like at a lo haunted location live. And I was, it was so much fun just answering questions for people in the chat. Yeah. And then, um, and then I fell asleep on the couch, you know, and then all of a sudden my phone started buzzing, bzz, bzz, you know, and it woke, woke me up and it's still live and there's still like six, 700 people watching it. It's like three in the morning <laughs> and awesome. I'm getting all these, getting all these screenshots of the shadow figure that they captured on the, on the, the camera. Mm -hmm. And it's like this shadow figure in the kitchen. It's like, my God, we got the Holy Grail on the first night. You know, this was, it was, I mean, I was super excited. I'm like, Holy cow. There it is. Boom. They, the, yeah. Those people, those people that were committed to sitting there looking at a live stream camera for, for hours, saw a shadow figure at the Hinsdale house when nobody would have noticed or seen it ever because we had a camera running, you know, like right. just, it, it was awesome. That, that's why I, whenever I do an investigation, I go live the entire time. Not that because I'm going to be catching it, but I go live the entire time. Yeah. Well, you never Except know. For... You just never know. But exactly. You could pick up an EVP. There she is. There she is. I knew she wasn't going to miss this one. <laughs> you could pick up EVPs on those cameras, like the the ones that are in the house. We we run them while teams are there. If the, if they don't want us to, we won't. But oh my god, um, we have we we offer that to them after their investigation, so they have sixty hours of footage from their investigation overnight too. And so many have come back with EVPs with things moving. It's it's pretty awesome. Just to have that extra, you know. Yeah, well, listen, I, I can't I, I'm gonna speak for this the eight of us, but I think um though that will be a will be a go for that. Cool. It would probably be more than just power, like we'll we're we're just crazy. We have a lot of fun while we're investigating too, but yeah. I think that well, would be you'd neat. be the only ones. You'd be the only ones to see it. So it's not like I would, unless without your permission, I wouldn't put anything up. We've uh, we have put up clips from teams that have been there mm -hmm. um, with their permission. You know, that's their yeah, footage. yeah, absolutely. So I got another question for you. So 
how different I bet is... you have like a hundred questions. There, oh, yes. yes, I do. Oh my gosh. This is the, <laughs> right. Darren. Oh my gosh. This is how we came together. This is how he had, I would have people on and Darren whenever Darren popped up, questions. full of questions. And I'm, I'm like, these are such good questions. That doesn't... <laughs> I feel bad sometimes when we do shows because he, he has so many questions to ask. And by the time the show's over, it's like, oh, I still had 97 questions to go. <laughs> Hey, I like picking people's brains. I know. It's good, though. <laughs> so um, now with the house being on the land, how different is the investigation outside of the house before you get inside the house? Is it How different totally, is it? How different I just is think, it? I just think it's a, it's completely – I think the house is uh, was put on land, the sacred land, you know? And uh, the thing – the energies <laughs> Thanks, that Kat. you have in the house are like kind of – I feel like they're rotating energies, but I think you get a lot of the same ones. And I feel like the the energies on the outside are trying to tell us a story or trying to tell us something that we don't know. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's definitely uh, ties to, you know, from what I understand, a Pukwudgie on the property. Um, there's like Karen, all know what that is, right? Metaphysical yeah. levels. No, I'm just asking. You know what a Pukwudgie is, right? I feel like I've heard of it. Want to explain to her what Pukwudgie is real quick? Uh, it's it's a creature uh, that is supposedly a, a caretaker of Native American land and property and graves and things like that. Oh, okay. And um, we've captured pictures of this creature that we can't explain in the forest. Um, and that's the only kind of explanation that I've had as far as it's kind of like a cryptid, I would say. Maybe. That's what I was going to ask, like a cryptid. But it's a something. small, it's small, but it's it's creepy looking. You know, really? I thought it was maybe like a shaved bear. I was trying to look at everything that could match what this thing was looking like, but then it had tall, skinny, or skinny finger, long fingers, and it, you could see a tail, and it was like, hmm, what is this thing, you know? So, well, I'm you glad it doesn't get like, in the house. Oh, what's Sam? that? I'm glad it doesn't get into the house. Oh, well, you never know. Oh, no, yeah, I don't think it's, it's never been in the house. I, uh, the land's been blessed, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but... It seems like what's on the inside is different than what's on the outside, for sure. I like heard you that. Get definitely, you I get heard a that. lot of native. You get a lot of uh, um, different types of uh, metaphysical type stuff going on outside. So mm -hmm. I said and, about your blue fairy lights. I said that somebody went outside and they saw blue lights. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's been, there's been teams that focus on the elemental aspect of the of the house as well. I mean, it's it's got everything. Mm -hmm. uh, now there's brothers that. It's uh, almost like a Skinwalker Ranch, but without like the, without all that like bad animal stuff. Well, because there's no animals really on the property, but. Oh yes, right? there's. We get a lot of them. Oh, you do. Yeah, bears, jaguars. Well, I mean, deer, no, they, they, they the Skinwalker has like cows and horses and mm. stuff like that. You know that were affected by whatever's happening there, but it, they have a lot of a little bit of everything. Right. Supposedly. You know what I mean? So, um, so do you feel the energy of the two brothers that were out there where one killed the other one? Well, the one's still alive. The one, that's what I mean. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we've captured pictures of a shadow figure on the outside of the house of a guy. It looks like he's holding a shotgun over his shoulder, like shadow. And then even dating back to the, the um, some years into the seventies and stuff like that, they've, there's a guy in overalls that they've seen, a spirit of a guy in an overalls that's a younger man. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I'd hate to think that if I was shot in the woods that I'd be roaming around those woods for eternity, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, but who knows, you know? Maybe yeah. it's, it seems to be anytime somebody encounters this, that it's very, it's like an intelligent type of haunting. So, yeah, not like heard... a visual type of thing, so. I've heard stories where spirits actually get into other people's cars out there. Oh, and that's been that's been known to happen. You know, like uh, I, there's a story in, in the 1970s when Mike went and sat down in the station wagon with his friend. And, and the, you could look, he turned around, he felt like something was there. And you could see the indentation go down on the seat behind them. Megan. Can you imagine? Do you hear this? Oh, Megan knows. She's been there. Oh, alone. I know. I know. She's the one that's like making me go. Good. <laughs> She's go, making Megan. me go. Hey, if I can get out there, I would get out there. I just got to convince my wife to come out with me. It's actually a cute house. And actually, tell like. Her, um, 
on the other aspects, like uh, let's go to Niagara Falls, honey, and have a romantic night at the casino and go to the Hinsdale house. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to Canada side. So well, my sure daughter wants to go to New York so bad. Does she? Yeah. She'd yeah. be as far farther west of the New York City that she could be, but she, at least she'd be in New York. I'm like, well, if we're going to go that far, well, then we'll as well just go to Amityville, too. And <laughs> yeah, you might as well. That, that, <laughs> right. so, so many Mike, places on the East Coast. Mike's like, yeah. you have to go. Mike, then you have to go and be my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be my spirit guard. <laughs> Um, yep. <laughs> Darren, you got anything? Like, any questions that people have in chat? If you don't, I know Darren does. I know. Uh, it's, it's hanging in there. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I love you, Mike. Yeah. So, so, what, what, so oh, besides oh. besides your first experience that made you want to buy this thing and save it, because I'm sure that's probably your most profound experience with Hinsdale, but is that your most profound experience altogether? Like, have you always been into the paranormal stuff and then... You know. Yeah, I grew up with it. I grew up with it. And uh, then later in life, got into it even more because of the research aspect and kind of like, uh, uh, you know, the whole Scooby-Doo aspect of it, like finding, solving the mystery and trying to trying to understand things. And, uh, you know, it's been something that's been part of my life for a long time, as far as uh, the paranormal goes. And uh, the, this just was added, you know, this is like, I the, the house that I grew up in was had hauntings and I ended up buying that and then I bought this one, you know, so I've always been drawn to it and I've always been drawn to mediums a lot, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know, like, it seems like I've always been drawn to mediums and healers hmm. in my life. It's everybody. Uh, every, do you think like, it's because time. you are a medium or do you think it's because you need I, I am. I, I believe I am. I don't really push that aspect of what I do. I use it for my own personal. Um, I worked with a, uh, Bernice Golden, who was a psychic medium for 54 years, and uh, she really helped me hone into that aspect. She even, like, when we were doing her live show, she would uh, just out of the blue, she'd be like, Dan, you answer this one. You know, she'd just, like, blow blow, blow up my spot, you know, like, and, uh, you know, it's it's helpful, but I, I, I always like to hear it out of somebody else. You know, right, I, don't think right, I, have, right. I don't think I have the confidence to to give somebody a reading, you know, like I just uh, utilize it for myself. I believe in it. I trust it. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Let, let other people do that job. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you took on a very important role that is needed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think the the medium aspect of it is just kind of like a, a second trade or something, if you will, you know, yeah. you know, uh, in case, you know, God forbid anything were to, fall through with Hinsdale or any, you know what I mean? You never know what, what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, right. but um, you have something else there than a backup, you know what I mean? To be able to utilize that in a way, maybe even on investigations and stuff like that, it's always good to be able to have that extra. Intuition. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I know. I, I, de I definitely, it's, I, I guess, I guess if, if I feel like somebody really needs it, really like I, there's been times where I've I've had to like just pull somebody aside and give them a message I, I just I, I have to because I feel like it's needed mm -hmm. and it's not something that I'm I'm norm normally would do but there's it's been so eye-opening when I have done that um just to just to hear the responses from people you know make that they needed that or it was um something that helped them with something that was going on in their life and I also feel like, I, like Bernice is like, uh, she's passed away, but I feel like she's kind of like the force for me. Like I hear her, like, and it's it, one, one might think if this was like the 1940s that I would probably be diagnosed as crazy and put in a loony bin, you know, but I, I can hear her voice, um, when I'm investigating, uh, you know, like, like she's still giving me advice because she, mm -hmm. she called, she, she basically, when I first met her. I was super excited because she used to do the syndicated radio show on Saturday mornings, the golden hour with Bernice golden, you know, and uh, I would listen to it and she'd do readings over the phone and give readings for people all over the country. And she, uh, she worked with Barbara Bush and she had such an awesome career uh, for me to actually have her at one of my psychic fairs and meet her. And then she called me and gave me messages. I've just said, I needed to hear them. And then, um, we just became really good friends, you know, and I, I helped bring her up at the end of her life, you know, like it was, it was like a match, Matt, we just matched really well together. 
And, um, you know, she's, uh, she's still with me. I feel like she's with me. And so many people have just come up to me out of the blue. Uh, like I was at, I was at Michigan Paracon the one time and I remember Jessica came up to me and she started telling me about Bernice. She didn't know Bernice. She didn't know, you know, like there's just, there's many readers have come up to me and, Oh yeah. Yeah. I was at Hinsdale house and I was in tears because I had my geo box going. That's right. And, um, that I heard her come through there, you know, and her husband was listening when I was there and I was, I was so happy because that was a place she always wanted to go, but she was wheelchair bound at the end of her life. And, um, she came through on the box and she swore she she had a little potty mouth off the air. She was so funny. And, that's amazing. Uh, that's how she, that's how she confirmed to me that it was her, you know, like, yeah. So it was, uh, just, just eye opening. Then, 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 then they have Doug reach out to me after and she goes that, oh my God, that was definitely Bernice. That was, she's, she's at the house, you know, she came to the house. So it's like, like, I feel protected, you know, like I feel like I have a protection around me for sure. That's awesome. I, I do think, I do think the more you're at a location, no matter what, uh, whether you own it or you don't own it, but the more you go to a place, I think the more the connection is uh, acknowledged on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like the energy sometimes will, you know, like I go, I always go to, I always stay at the in Lincoln square in Gettysburg and the, and, and the more times I go, the more, you know, the louder I can hear things or, you know what I mean? Feel things or, you know, I feel like they're not as afraid to communicate because they know, your intentions are right. pure, you know, and they get to know you as you're getting to know them. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. So I think that's cool. Like I, 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 I can imagine, I mean, I'm sure. How often do you go? Well, that's the other thing. Like I, I, part of the place was, is that owners would get infatuated with the location and, you know, you would be like Gollum with in Lord of the Rings. And I didn't want that <laughs> happening to me, you know? So I have a great team of folks that help at the Good. house. You know, like, that was my and, other question I was going to ask. We rotate, the, we rotate the duties around, um, you know, we communicate with each other. And actually, since I've owned it, you know, there's been a lot of people that have helped, you know, and running tours. And it's not all on my shoulders because what? whereas if I'm at an event, I, yeah, I'm promoting the location, but I'm not there. You know, like right. somebody else is there. Um, and, uh, everybody has a, a lot, a lot of people have connection with the location, you know? So right. I have, I have such a good group of people. That's yeah, awesome. That's, that's what I was going to ask you. I'm sure like, do you have like people that help out and volunteer or, or help out? And, you know, yeah, cause I just whatever. don't want it to become an infatuation. You know, I don't want it to become like a situation where you get infatuated with it. And how, that's, how, that that's, hard. Yeah. that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Especially yeah. when you have such a cool place, you know, yeah. it's not and just I, I am in a way, but I, I know my limits, you know, I know like, okay, you know, I'm not going to go up there to Billy's going up today or Tiffany's going up today or Casey's going up or Chelsea's going up or some, somebody's going to go, be going up and uh, uh, taking care of this. And I, I just have to let it, let what's going to happen, happen, you know, and, and that's how it runs. And it's run like that since I've owned it. And um, you have to, did keep you the, have to, did you have to like convince yourself that it would be okay? Yes. That somebody else was doing it. <laughs> It, well, it's it's hard because I've I you know I have a business degree. I have a marketing background. I've always been keen on customer service, and I know this is a business. It's not only a paranormal location, but it's a business. It's at my reputation, right? So it's always been hard for me. To, you know, I want to train people. I want I want them to understand how I would do things, but I also want them to be themselves. You know, I want right. them to you know, if something happened, you know, I want them to be able to tell their stories as well. But I, I think just you just surround yourself by good people, you know, and, and you have to have trust, you know, and, and I've, I've never, you know, the people that I've surrounded myself throughout the time that I've owned that um, have been amazing. You know, they're lifelong friends and they're people that I can look back on and have happy memories with. And, uh, you know, and I know that they'd be there for me in a heartbeat if I needed them. And likewise, you know, vice versa, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, just, it's, it, it's to me that the, the Hinsdale house has also grown some amazing relationships mm -hmm. for people. It's drawn people together mm -hmm. uh, that uh, normally wouldn't have been drawn together. Um, it's, it's had positive impacts on a lot of people too, because um, that's where people have met. That's where pe I've had people that have met 
that are getting married from the Hinsdale house. I have had people that have taken their honeymoon at the Hinsdale house because of their experience there. I've had. Really? Oh yeah. Two. Oh, that's I've awesome. Two that's great. There. I'm, I am marrying uh, one of my patrons or we're marrying one of our patrons there uh, coming that's up awesome. in, in, in uh, July. So oh, I, mean, I bet you get some cool photos at that place. Oh yeah. Tons of, tons of photos, but it, it draws people in and people feel connected with it, you know, and they, and, even even the so some my my one neighbor that was way way down the street rich polly he's uh i remember when i first got that the location he was worried that you know it's quiet it's quiet people don't move up to the mountains to deal with crap that people in the city deal with you know they just like peace and quiet they don't want craziness up on their hill and i i the the people that owned it were trying to have like paracons up there and trying to do like events up there and and you know, i got i understood why they were doing it um but i just felt like I didn't want to have, I wanted to pay respect to the energies that were there as opposed to trying to, you know, they, they needed to make money for the location. I, I, I get it, but right. I, I feel like it all comes in due process and due time. And uh, the, when I bought it, he was, I was basically getting death threats, you know, like don't, don't, nobody better turn down my driveway, blah, blah, blah. And finally, oh I just, my gosh. I'm like, oh. what do I do? What do I do in this situation? You know, like, do I call the cops? I go, I got to act. I got to, I got to treat it as though I'm a neighbor, you know? So I, mm -hmm. I sent the guy a message on, on social media and just said, listen, this is why I bought the location. And I don't plan on, if anything happened, I apologize. I said, but I want to be a good neighbor. I want to be, and he ended up, he is on a, but such a good friend now. Like he's, oh, that's awesome. he's uh, I sponsor his race car and we got a Hinsdale house race car and we have a few oh. days ago yeah and uh he's he's up the hill so he's like he's a 300 pound beast that i wouldn't want to mess with you know and uh when the cameras detect things in the middle of the night and if there's kids on the property i'm like rich what are you doing he's like i'm on my way down you know and he'll, <laughs> That's he'll, awesome. he'll get in his truck and he'll run down there and i remember the one time he's blocked their car into the driveway and he's he's, he's totally screwing with them but he's straight faced with them he's like I got him. What do you want me to do with them? You know, like <laughs> just screwing with them and you hear the kids uh, rumbling in the background, but that's the, that I need to have that message to the kids that come up because they used to just break in and mess oh. things up. So that message will get out that this isn't a place to do that anymore. And we haven't right. had any issues for years. So and that's, see, uh, and then see, that's such a positive thing that you did. Like here you get this like nasty message from somebody or like what most people probably take as something, you know, nasty and like, Oh my God, you know, the Jersey Italian in me would be like, Motherfucker, blah, 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 you know, but instead you were positive about it. You approached it, you know, how you would, you know, how most people should anyway. And, uh, and now you have like this, this person that helps you out, you know, and, and that's. Yeah. Well, awesome. I think, I, I feel like that's the, I don't know. That's like my, the best approach in life, you know, like. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. There's, but there's the people out there that, that don't do that. And then. They it just ends up being a big negative scene. mess, you know. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're talking about it like that because so that people are watching. You know what I mean? Hopefully, watch this and say, you know what? Yeah, you know. People get so disconnected because of the internet and social media, and mm -hmm. and if you just take the time to speak to somebody, sometimes it's so much easier to work things out or 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 figure things out when you just verbally speak to something because you can't tell my emotion you can't tell how passionate i am about something over a text message or if i'm kidding or lying or, or joking around or, or anything you know and and you know that's that's why i just I, i'd rather pick up the phone you know i'm with you 1000 percent. so so megan wants to know what is your favorite and least favorite aspect about the house paranormal speaking I, I mean, my favorite aspect of the house is uh, the history, um, all the all the energies that we've been able to connect, the stories that we've been able to connect and put together at the location, um, the fact that we may be able to give some closure to Clara, who was the family that lived there in the 1970s, on some of the things that happened to her um, because of all the research that we've been able to do there, and not just my research, but other people's research. Um, I don't know. I've never, I've never had a negative for that house, except for the first time that I was there, that, that initial feeling of being scared. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe the house be, knows that, that I'm the one saving it, or I'm the one that's the curator of it now. And they don't want to screw with me because they know that I bring the people there. You know, mm -hmm. I, right. it's, 
it's but i've never had i've never had like a negative negative experience where i'm like i'm not going back there how this is this is crazy you know like um it's all been positive interaction for me so have you had uh uh what has been the one of the most craziest nights you've ever experienced out there in the house i was there with one other person um a couple i think it was like two summers ago and she has she's kind of like skeptic interested local friend of mine kaylee stolberg and she uh wanted to just experience something she wanted to have a uh, um an experience in the paranormal you know she's like it really interested in the house i mean she's uh, interested in the upkeep of it the history she loves the story behind it but she's never experienced it for you to everybody really see it with her own eyes so so let's just have a quiet night and see what we can do, you know. So we were, you know, we sh shot the shit at the table and investigated a little bit, you know, and, and nothing was happening. It was like almost three in the morning. And we're like, all right, well, let's just try to get a little bit of sleep. You know, there's no guarantees with this stuff, you know. Right. <laughs> and uh, the lights were off. And uh, the only thing that was on in the living room was a night light. And uh, I just, I and I'm not, I'll say this right now, I'm not one to boast about ever getting touched or scratched or any of that stuff, you know. And I felt something on the back of my head, like touched the back of my head when I was curled up on the couch. And I was like, what, the, what the hell? You know, like it was, it was, it was a little unsettling, you know, like something just touched the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And I know Kaylee's over on that couch right there because I can see her curled up. All right. So uh, I, I turned around and I saw this like black shadow gliding in front. You could, it was blocking the light out right in, like, right there, you know, like psh, gone. I'm like, holy shit, you know, holy shit. <laughs> And uh, I, I kicked over it. I said, Kaylee. And uh, she turned around and she's like, oh, my God, do you see? Because I kept going like back and forth. She goes, do you see that? Do you see that? Black? I go, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that it's not, not my eyes bugging out here. And, and she like jumped over on my couch and she's like, it, it just kept, it kept happening for like three minutes. Just kept going wow. back and forth in front of the and then it just dissipated in the best room into that area over there. And did you feel that to be residual? no no i felt like it was like checking pacing? up on us like it wasn't like pacing that was like walking and then a couple minutes later it would go like this way because we've had we've had other teams experience this this shadow we've mm -hmm. had it actually like, to the point where it's there's poltergeist activity like we've had blankets over covered over a, an investigator with a camera on them and they, they lift it up like it looks like an arm underneath the blankets i mean it's like pretty pretty crazy stuff so i think, I don't think it's, it's awesome you videotape you know what i mean like you video the 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 stuff like i think that's great yeah. do you, so yeah. do you feel like there's a mixture of like okay there's intelligence but then do you feel like there's also a mixture of res um uh, uh what i'm trying to think of i don't think there's residual. much residual there residual yeah there hasn't been anything that i've ever, ever been able to like pinpoint as far as like even even throughout like having this teams there like because i always ask them like write down the times if, you, if something happens or you see something where it happens so we can like kind of pinpoint i've never been able to like pinpoint a time or area that something happens like i know like paul kenyon likes to go there on the anniversary of the of the exorcism every mm -hmm. year he's there you know and he was there during he's a old timer he was there during the exorcism with the dandy family and he comes back there every year and uh, we hold that day for him because he just wants to be in the house years and years after that happened just to see if he can relive any of that day wow. you know so so the theory behind from what i remember behind native american spirits or you know things that watch the land and you know pay attention to that kind of stuff uh tend to be tend to leave people feeling on the more uneasy side i don't want to say negative because just uneasy maybe um, but that's, I feel like that's usually when the people aren't taking care of the property, you know, there, there's trash all over the land or there's, you know, mm -hmm. but you seem to be taking care of the property. Do you get that uneasy feeling or do you get a lot of people? I think saying, that, oh, the, that side feels so, wor you know, it doesn't, doesn't, feel, I'd rather be inside than outside, you know? Um, that's how it was at the beginning. You'd rather be inside than outside because the property wasn't upkept. It was not in good shape. And I've been able to re-sculpture and reshape the property the way that it was originally, even before they dug the pond there. Um, we've been able to, there was an area behind the house that was all swampy because of the aquifer and the well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to find the, the, the beginning of that. And we actually have like a sewer tube that we dug this big giant trench all the way down to the pond. 
so the water will go into the um the tunnel and go under the ground to the pond so it's not saturating all the property anymore like and it's it, because we've done that it's we found, found a foundation that was missing that we couldn't figure out we oh, still don't even really know what it is really <clears throat> but we've also been paying homage to the native americans we've Good. been um, we have a giving tree, you know, Darren mentioned that at the beginning up in the hill behind the house where we found the picture of the Pukwudgie, um, Amy Perry Lane, uh, who, uh, from Pair Expeditions, uh, for years and years did the overnights there with groups and, uh, she would have them make feathers and offerings and it's become quite the spectacle. Um, you know, the, the tree up there, you now people that come there add to it and they just keep adding to this, this area and it's just uh, amazing. Oh. So, um, question. But the, the energy has definitely changed. I, it's. I, I feel like we have a connection with the Native American spirits there, mm -hmm. as opposed to not a, but not a negative one, a more positive because they know right. that they know what our intentions are now. Right. They know that we're there to, that to to keep the the property in a positive light. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do live webcam feeds? Uh, we do. We have been a case. We haven't done many. We used to do them all the time. Because uh, you could probably now, make that a part of the QR thing. Like if people pay like four dollars, you know they could, or whatever. I'm I'm just throwing a number out there. I don't I don't know what, but you know how you can, well can log in and watch what like if you don't have anybody staying there or something, and people can watch, you know the the cameras overnight. That's the that was the hardest the, the 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 hardest thing with my schedule, and other people's schedules. It was and the the fact that the house is booked. It was the the days that nobody was there. It was hard to get somebody to set up the live feeds to, to stream them, you know. So like, because you have to get a schedule, and then they, maybe that person has to work. Or I had at one point, I had three different people with different with computers that could set up the live stream, and uh, it just it was hard because like I used to do it on my YouTube channel, you know. Mm -hmm. And I and I actually have cameras at um, Old Park Hotel down in Texas, uh, Melbourne Manor. Um, Wildwood Sanitarium, Hinsdale House, uh, Greystone Manor, and in, in uh, Greystone Manor is out in uh, another part, like uh, New York, uh, Niagara County. Um, so I have I have cameras at a lot of different haunted locations, um, but I just don't have somebody that can take the the realm to stream them, you know. And it's hard for me, like with the little bit of time that I have, it's like I spend it with my family, or if I can get one up. So it's just, you have to monitor it too. You can't just sit there and, you know, you have to watch it. So yeah. it, I introduced Taryn to a new kind of uh, webcam. It's called a, uh, a wise cam. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And what they have is it's called a, a pan two ver, uh, version two of this thing is where you can physically uh, rotate left to right 360 degrees, tilt up and down with your phone. Mm -hmm. I can, I, can, I can do that with all my cameras at the house. Amcrest. Okay. I wasn't quite sure if there's something else that ultra like that besides that, but yeah, yeah I got actually see. I have some right here. Look at boom. You know, I got <laughs> I just just because I at one point I was like trying to set up cameras at, at haunted as many haunted locations I could. I had at Statler Hotel downtown Buffalo. Um and just let bringing those locations to people when nobody's there just so you could watch the cameras, you know, it was it's just a, it's a full-time job. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah but why, why couldn't you just, I mean, like, couldn't somebody just go back and, like, see if anybody saw it? Or you, you, I don't know. No, no, the problem is, is the way that there's no, it's not an easy, there's no easy way to stream a live stream. Um, okay. You have to, you have to get, like, a stream key and you have to put it into a, uh, like a restream or you have to put it into a different program and you have, so you're basically taking a picture of your picture, then streaming that picture onto your, wherever you want to stream it. And there's no like direct streaming, you know, there's nothing that could direct streams live and you have to, a lot of the times that'll falter, the connection can falter. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you leave it, then it's just a pause screen and nothing's happening. And then right. it was a waste of a live stream. So you have yeah, to, yeah, that's true. You have to I monitor that. that. Yeah, that, I, if somebody could invent a, a a live streaming cameras that you know was easy enough as pressing a button, that would be awesome. But it's it's mm -hmm. not or as Bluetooth, or Bluetooth, live yeah. the easy button, yeah. boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you got, you got those uh, dash cams. I found one that's a dash cam. You can live stream to Facebook and all that stuff too. What? A dash cam. 
that live yeah, stream? Yeah, you have to press play. Uh, I haven't studied too much into it, so I'm looking into it. <laughs> I think See you have if... to actually. I think you have to be there and press play. So that means I would have to drive an hour and a half to Hinsdale House, press play. And... I don't know. I'll let you know yeah. if you could do it from your phone. If it's a remote thing, that would be awesome. Right. Right. I'll look into it. Yeah. Um, so um, somebody was asking, what are the rates to investigate there? Uh, three hundred. I mean, we charge three hundred for a team. Um, so does it matter how many? Do you, is there to, a limit? Up to, six, up to six people, and then if it's over six, it's an extra fifty dollars a person. Mm -hmm. Try to make it cheap, fair for people. Yeah, no, that's really reasonable. That's, I mean, there yeah, are some places absolutely. like yeah, you like hold the whole house is like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. You know. Even a location that's just, you know, it's, it makes it very hard for people, you know, that are hardworking middle class people that don't have like just, you know. And I've had, there, there, like I've said on other podcasts too, like if there's a situation where money is tight, you know, um, I, I, I want people that are there to be there for the right reasons. And mm -hmm. I feel like what goes around comes around. Like if you're a good investigator, but you don't have, you can't afford to pay the 50 bucks. Right. Let me know. Like, just I, it's not a, that big of a deal, you know. Like, it's that's just that money goes back into helping the house. And there's been times where I've let people come in for free, and then they turn around and do an event and pay me that way or something or or whatever, right. you know. Like, what goes? I, I just feel like what goes around comes around, and it's not can't. It's not all about money. It's about doing things for the right reasons uh, mm -hmm. throughout everything that you Absolutely. do in life. And then if if the money's a thing, then let me know. Just send me a message. Talk to me on the side, and we'll get it worked out because I want you to come. That's awesome. That's such a good, and that's why it's so successful. I say this all the time. Like there's certain things that you need to be success. I think that makes this in this field so successful, whether it's ghost hunters who have the, the TV show, which I think is the most successful show because of the relationship that they have. They've all been investigated for 20 years. They trust each other. You know, it's a good solid show. They're not, everything's a demon and running out of the places and stuff like that. You know, like, so I think you, if it's, if it's about just about money to people, then I think that's where it, it fails. It's, it's, it's a disconnect. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're not in it for the right reason, especially you have to think about what you're dealing with. You're dealing with, you know, theoretically you're dealing with the spiritual realm of things, you know, and the universe. And, you know, like you said, what goes around comes around. And, and so if you're doing it for the right reasons, I feel like the only way you could the only the only ending to this is success you know and you look back and you go wow like i i put in a lot of effing hard work but it paid off because look at all of the success and look at the place and look at what we're doing for this place and what i wanted to do is actually coming to fruition right you know mm -hmm. and that's the reward and people don't understand that like the reward of what you're doing is actually mm -hmm. seeing what you envisioned coming to fruition. Right. Through what you love doing. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, it's, and it's actually owning the locations opened up a lot of doors, you know, like, um, you know, writing a book about it. It's allowed me to, you know, I, I don't know why people feel like just because I, I own the place makes me more knowledgeable than anybody else, but I've been able to be on some television shows because of it and, and go around the world and talk about the location and my experiences. And I mean, I feel very blessed. I mean, I feel like it's, it's, I, I don't know, like it's pretty awesome, you know, to be able to meet new people, investigate with new people, go to new locations and, and check things out, you know, which I wouldn't have normally been able to do. Um, How often do you investigate there? Mm, I try maybe like, like actually like investigate. I, I mean, if there's something I need to try to figure out, I will. Um, but probably like four or five times a year. I don't, mm -hmm. uh, I don't do it a lot because it, it, I think it can get overdone, you know, and I don't want to push, push, push. I need to let it breathe too. Um, so, I mean, only so much I could take as a human being, let alone a spirit, people asking me the same question over and over again. That's why I try to give people as much information as possible. So hopefully they come up with different questions when they, when they yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good idea. I used to be so against that. But like lately, last couple of interviews that I've been a part of are done. You know, like it it makes sense. on, But that would have to be your intention. Like you're not just walking into a building like, okay, who am I going to? I got to try to connect with somebody or find someone or something. As opposed to say, okay, here's this information. And you're walking in right. and directly, you know, your intention is to communicate with that person. You know, right. 
So it's different. I, I think it's a good idea. I love it. And it leads into my last question is that's not, you... there's no such thing, Darren, for you. Well, there's a time limit. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Uh, so with that, uh, do you think you have any experiments that you want to try that you haven't tried yet that is kind of eking at you? I've been being, uh, being the production manager for death Walker for Nick's new show. I've been looking at and having the finances to be able to do things that I would have never been able to do. Um, as far as experimentations go. Um, I mean, I don't want to, we, we've really pushed the limits I mean, we're, we're talking like different scientific theories and being able to buy like cool things that you're, you're not going to be able to normally take to an investigation with you and experiment mm -hmm. with. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty amazing. Like I even have, I even have Nick walking through lightning bolts uh, to energize the room. Like it's, it's like a human lightning bolt machine. It's like a human like, EMF yeah like, a, human... like a huge jacob's ladder type deal yeah like you're using your whole body as a beacon you know and uh mm -hmm. um but i mean yeah i've been able to do some pretty cool stuff uh in the past couple of years as far as um experimentation goes um do i want to bring some of that to the house yes yes yeah. um, but you know... I... go ahead sorry no i was just gonna say i just I... want to make sure that it's done right and i want to make sure that it's documented when we do it um, right. Everything that I do that's huge right. like that, I want to have documented. So I, I got to make sure that I have like people that are to film it and document everything that we do and any responses that may happen because of that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, do you know Ron Yacovetti and Lourdes Gonzalez? Yes. yes. Have you ever Probably. done the, the direct radio, the DRV, the direct radio voice that they do? No, not personally. Oh, you have to do it. They, it's, it's, I'm not a big, I'm not a fan of, I'm sorry, this is no disrespect to anybody that uses them, swears by them, whatever, but I'm not a fan of spirit boxes. I don't like things that run on radio waves because I feel like it's never, it could be, you know, I feel like it's all what you perceive. It's, you know, what you could hear. Yes, I have heard some, like maybe two or three things throughout the years where people have gotten some responses that are, that leave me like, okay, but for the most part, you, you just don't know because it's scanning radio frequencies, you know? Well, Ron uses this thing where it it um, uses a frequency where nothing is going to it. There's no radio. It's a lower level, level, lower level frequency. 222. I, yeah. oh, this, I remember the number 222. So he uses that. Um, and it's like white noise, but then all of a sudden you're hearing voices and he's like there's no way we should be he's, hearing voices he has found a that's a that's a good theory and a good way to cancel out the actual radio way uh the things coming in from the radio antennas because you're using a different frequency that nobody else uses mm -hmm. and you're and you're still you're still scanning through it and making that white noise that supposedly theoretically is uh makes it easier for energies to speak so i mean he's taking away that thing that you don't like and, and right and I'm amazed if, by it. If something comes through on that, then hey. We used, I, one, right? I investigated with them at, at Kreischer <laughs> Mansion in Staten Island and we used it. And I, I was live. So I made him, I made him explain it to everybody because he's mm -hmm. explained it to me 17 times. I'm not a techie <laughs> person and I just can't get it. Like it just, so I never explain it right. So I'm like, all right, you're live. Explain it. <laughs> but, and we did it and it was amazing. I'm an EVP person. That's my favorite thing to get EVPs. I love, and I'm also kind of clear audience. So I can sometimes hear responses that are validated on recorder. So the whole DRV thing is amazing to me. Yeah. And I'm all about experiments. And that should probably be happen there. I think that would be a great, a great thing. I would there pay to go. see that. <laughs> I would. Yeah. I, I believe in that DRV thing. Like, it, like I, I don't know how. Like, I, don't, I would want somebody to explain that to me how that makes sense because it, well, you, you, you believe it until somebody comes up with a way to debunk it, which I don't. Yes. It's, it's not. There hasn't been a way yet. So right. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I mean. Like, if somebody it. could, if somebody does, like, okay, fine. But I think it's amazing. Yeah. No, it is cool. It's definitely cool. They've been yeah. in the house a few times too. So. Yeah, I wonder if they're, I'm going to have to I ask him if he's ever gotten anything using the DRV there. I think they have, actually. Really? Yeah. 
Well, see, now you have to turn. Is that being, is that being smart, Ron? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you've never been a part of it. No. You should I never got to you know why? Because you should do it because you're so connected with the place. Like maybe they would be more vocal if you're there. Perhaps. He's got the geophone doll too. The geo box. Or geo box, I'm sorry. Yeah. He's are you <laughs> I can't with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that would be awesome. And if they do decide to do that, I want to be there for that for sure. Because <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, and as long as I can plan ahead, I mean, that would be something I'd participate in. I'd check it out. Uh, I've, uh, I've usually, like, when they've been there, I've kind of, you know, let them do their thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but you, you like doing team. this stuff, you know? I do, but I, if I, if I, I, I would want to stay with every team. I, I would get divorced because <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I, would, uh, I would be like, honey, I'm going to let a team in. Does anybody know where daddy is? It's two yeah, in the morning. Right. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. still down at the house, you know, like. I have to put a limit on it, you know, like I have to be able to, because I, I am gone on some weekends and I am gone at, at, and having, you know, investigating other locations and stuff like that. So it's when I do do it at the Hinsdale house, it's usually like I pl pre-plan it. Like that's going right. to be an investigation. Well, I'm going to message Ron and Lourdes and then I'll even include you into the messages so that we can plan something <laughs> because I think that would be Sounds awesome. Good to me. Sounds good to me. I think that would be awesome with you being there and you being such a, quote unquote conduit almost because of how connected you are. You just want yeah. me as a trigger object. I, I do. Know. I want you as my bait. <laughs> my ghost, my Dear ghost ghosty bait. ghosties. Look who I got. As long as I don't as long as I don't have to wear a burlap sack over my head, I'll be fine with that. <laughs> burlap sack. <laughs> <laughs> well didn't they do that on Ghost Bait, that show that was on? There's yep. people like I never watched it. I don't know. They did. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That got dangerous sometimes watching. I was afraid for one of those people. Wait, was this about? Was these the same? Were these the people that like dug a grave or did a fire or something like that? Because somebody died in a fire. Were they the ones that recreated like the people's deaths or something? I think so. Yeah. And then was that they who that like, was? They always like did trigger objects of, and use themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like, and like they would recreate stuff. I think they got kicked off the air when they re they did something. I really think it bad. lasted a season. I think. Yeah, one season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there was one guy was sitting in a you know a guy or lady I can't remember was sitting in a chair, but he was or she was close to um, a pool that if she got shoved, she would have been right into the pool, or he would have been in the pool. You know, I mean, it's they do dangerous stuff like that. It's you're kind of asking for it, you know. Well. That type of deal. But so it's almost 930 here, Dan. So uh, would you like to let everybody know what's all coming up on your schedule and uh, plug the uh, Patreon page as well? Yeah, I mean, the, just check out my website, DanielClass.com. Um, it's got links to everything that I do, basically. My next big event is this, this Friday at the Hinsdale House. I have my teammate from the Ghost Finders, Melody Knapp. And Jason Baker doing an event there. It's uh, I think it's sold out. We have it sold out for this Friday, so it's going to awesome. be, be cool. Um, I I will be there as a specter and backup if needed. <laughs> um, but uh, I've got some cool. I've got a friend coming in from Michigan, and I got some friends coming in, so I'll, I'll definitely be down there hanging out with them and uh, making sure everything runs smoothly for them. That's and, awesome. Uh, awesome. Awesome. You know, we got some. And cool don't forget, you got the, you got the peaches coming September twenty third and twenty fourth. Yes, and then I have. I'm also a film <laughs> producer, and I. He's like uh, peaches. One of my, Who the fuck are the peaches? <laughs> yeah, you guys, you're, you're the peaches. Me, Megan, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on August August twentieth, uh, during the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash, my half my team will be there. I'll be down there for one night, but on August twentieth, in, in North Tonawanda, New York, we're doing a red carpet event, uh, the United States premiere of Death Walker, and then also the premiere of. Behind the Shadows Decades, which is another uh, show that I produce. It's going to be on uh, Paraflix. Um, okay. It's going to be debuting right before that. So it's 1,100-person theater. There's going to be a lot of cool celebrities coming out. It's going to be like one of those red carpet things. And your oh, picture's taken, and it's going to be cool. That's awesome. I did about it. Very That's cool. awesome. Um, 
Yeah, I'm looking. I, I am. I honestly am looking forward to finally investigating it. I've, I've avoided Good. it. I've avoided it for now. quite some time. We definitely and needed to speak tonight, so it helps. For sure. Yeah, no, it did. Like, it really, you have a very calming way of explaining things about it. You know, Jump where, in two feet. You know, where mm -hmm. my, my friends were like, holy shit, you never guess what happened last night. I, I couldn't even, blah, blah, blah. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, not going there. <laughs> but no, I think it's awesome. I mean, I think it's great what you do, period. Like what you do for the house, what you do for the history of it, you know, and, and pre the preservation. You know, it's it's amazing. And I think, you, you know, the hard work is paying off, you know, and, you know, it, I just wish you nothing but the best for it. And I hope I hope it becomes what everything that you wanted it to become. Thank you. Me too. You're welcome. You'll absolutely get there with all the support and everybody yeah. from Patreon and everything else. You'll get there. I mean, without a blink of an eye. Yeah, just gotta have patience and absolutely, absolutely. Well, this has been a fantastic interview, Dan. I'm uh, happy to have you on for a Paranormal Question of the Day and have you back soon. And um, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna good. I'm gonna have Dan come on Paranormal Brew. Yep, that too. I'm gonna be a guest stealer, Darren. There you go. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> she stealed a couple of my guests already. I'm always like afterwards, I'm like, hey, you want to come up around and brew? <laughs> ah, that's yeah. all good. It's all for a good cause. And, you know, that's you need the outreach. You know, that's the only way people will know what's going on. So. And, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And great cause. And, you know, let's give them some money that's going to help them. Go forward, well, where can so. they where so where do they go to to help with the project yep. the donations or whatever? Like, how can they go to do that? Um, the easiest way for me would be like patreon.com slash Hinsdale House Museum. That's scrolling on the bottom right there of the screen. Now, do people um, have to sign up to give donations or can they just give donations without signing up to Patreon? They if they want to just give a donation, I can do like cash app, PayPal, um, Venmo, you know, just hit me up and ask me that and. Uh, Patreon is, I like people to join the Patreon because it's cool because they get involved. The, mm -hmm. They they, be, they get involved, they get the information before anybody else. They get chances to participate in making decisions for the location. And, um, you know, we have, we get to know each other. We come like a little family, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's 12 bucks a year at, the, at a minimum, you know, to, uh, right. to join the group. So, and it helps. I'm thinking about doing it because I'm seeing more and more people are getting on to that. But is it something it's, more for like you wanting donations and stuff, Patreon? So what it what it on uh, Patreon either you do it monthly or you can do it yearly. So you know, whatever you prefer, you know, like whatever is easiest for you. But I mean, um, is it for advertising for like like a GoFundMe type of a thing, or is it no? Just so this like is a this is a continuous type of thing. You can drop out whenever you want, uh, but you're basically committing to becoming a, a patron for the Hinsdale House. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's restoration effort. So you can either do it monthly or yearly, and then you get to participate in seeing everything that's happening there. Uh, hand, like hands-on mm -hmm. type, uh, you know, like what do we got coming up next? What are we working on now? Oh, we're, we're going to build, the, we're building a cabin or we're, we're fixing this or this broke or, you know, just so you kind of know, like, you know, like we had a, a thing where the, the toilet, uh, the team accidentally turned the, uh, the heat down and the toilet froze and oh, water nice. exploded all over, you know, but that that's where everybody came together. Like the patrons were there and everybody came together and we had that, uh, had that, uh, fixed. The you links know? below, the yep. links below links right below. here. Yeah. See it? Patreon.com slash Hinsdale house museum. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, I'll have Jeff. that on there for a few uh, weeks on the paranormal question of the day. So, so wait, the patron, like, is that, Per, so twelve dollars a year, like so, the Patreon isn't like a social platform. Like you're actually paying twelve dollars a year. Yeah, just you're not, you're not going on there. I'm not, just, for, yeah, just for just for the house, and then everything that it, there there's a like a tiers, tiers. Like you can pick different tiers, like uh, what you what you want to be able to give. But then there's like there is a like a news feed on there, but it's all going to be like updates on the Hinsdale House or updates on me or updates on what's what we're doing there. It's not so going to be access like, of other people. You have to pay subscriptions for other people's stuff. Right. You, so, okay. So I, was just like, to uh, out. Like, I don't know anything about Patreon. So, but I've been hearing. You're, bas you're, you're basically, you're basically pledging to support that person 
right you know, oh that's cool okay okay so you know it's like mean? uh josh hurt when he goes on there he does his one YouTube of my stuff. i'm one of his patrons right we, so we it's like i mean he goes on youtube and that's where you see it first because it won't directly go on youtube because if you're a patron you get that for first access mm -hmm. he'll put up pictures and say, hey what are you telling me about this before anybody else sees it before he promotes it anywhere else he's gonna be on my show from me June so <laughs> so i mean that's what patreon is he, they include you in a lot of stuff the more tier you go up the more uh activity you can yeah you have can get like access like to free merchandise sent to you like i have like patrons that are over a certain level they get haunted magazine subscription sent to them um cool cool things you know because I, I distribute that so i can make that happen you know like different uh different tiers get you different perks as well and yep. you still get to be part of helping so what, what do you doing. need what do you need like you're taking donations for this qr code thing mm -hmm. is that through the patreon uh no like you can send me money uh like i just got a guy that sent me a check today you know yeah. sent me a hundred dollars so I, I had a goal like I, I think it was like around seven hundred and fifty dollars we needed to get to get it done for the house. So That's and so I broke much. it down. You know, I broke it down like we needed like uh, t twelve poles post dug, and we need like the posts, and we need the QR codes, and we need so there's like information that you need. You know, all the price breakdown of everything that we needed on there. So awesome! And how close are you to your goal? We're almost halfway there. Awesome. I want to get them up by June first. So, well, I I'm, I think I'm I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll help out. Well, thank you. I'm helping out. Yeah. Thank you. I, as long it. as I know it's good, like I, like I help Tim out. You know what I mean? Like I I try to help out. It's, it, I love Tim's calls. Like I love it. And so you know I I totally love what you're doing for the place and and it's awesome. Honestly, all like all jokes aside, like I I do exaggerate a lot. So people, but people know that about me, you know, that watch my show and stuff. I'm always like, oh, yeah. nothing in the woods. There's wrong turn people in there, you know. Like I'm. I, totally, hope, I, I hope I'm not coming across as too serious. No. <laughs> Why so? Serious? I don't want you to think like I'm like I'm thinking because that the people that know me the people that know me the best know that I can keep a straight face and come up with the best jokes and just keep a straight face. And the, be <laughs> the best thing about it is like watching the person like. Is he serious right now? Like, you know, <laughs> in your head, that's like, like that's like Alan from Hangover. He's like a master yeah. at that, right? Mm -hmm. He'll just sit yep. there and he talks, and they're all like, Is "This guy serious right now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like awesome. I said, I'll have this link up uh, for a few weeks. That way, uh, people can contribute. I'll mention it on every episode I do. Uh, also, on the live streams when I do paranormal investigations, like I did this past weekend, I will have it on there for you as well. And Dan, Excellent. I will be hitting you up for a, to set a date with me for Paranormal Brew. Sounds good to me. <laughs> set it up. At least sucker I'm sucker you with wine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today for Paranormal Question Day with Mr. Danny Class and talking about Hinsdale House. And for Dan and Taryn, I'm Darren. I bid you adieu. And you've been watch you have been watching BB3 TV and Paranormal Brew Network. So long, everybody. I made the hangover reference. You should have too.